Hey, welcome to class tonight. We're going to talk about blue cheese and we're going to be using one of the best blue cheeses in America, if not the world, Port Reyes. And there's some of their port, their blue cheese from their Port Reyes area and uh, some of their other cheeses. I just got a big shipment and uh, no, they don't uh, sponsor the show. I just want you guys to know the best stuff. It's kind of like when I teach in a classroom, I'll talk about a KitchenAid or I'll talk about a certain food processor and I get more people ask if I'm getting paid to do that and I'm not. I uh, Once in a while, when I worked on my food processor books, I did get food processors sent to me, but I didn't talk about them in the books of which ones I like the best. Uh, only when I'm here at home, I'll tell you what I like the best and also the kind of cookware, things like that. If anybody emails me with questions like that, I'll tell you my choice. My number one question I get is knives. What kind of knives I use? I have an array of different kinds of knives. So you don't have to stick with the block with all the knives the same. And really all you need is three knives, maybe four. A paring knife, oh, steak knives. Those are from France that I have. You need a, uh, a serrated knife for your breads and some cakes. Angel food cake works really well with that. And then I also have a chef knife and I've got a couple others, but those are the ones I use a lot. A deboning knife once in a while. Now we're doing deboning and stuff. Tonight is one of these special recipes that I, I've had since probably I started teaching. Years and years ago, I taught a class in, uh, at Sir La Table stores. Uh, when they were opening all their stores up, I was one of their first chefs when they only had store number two, which was in Berkeley. And I did a class all on blue cheese. It was called Blue Cheeses of the World. And a lot of people don't realize that uh, Stilton blue cheese, Stilton is a blue cheese family. Uh, Gorgonzola is part of the cheese family, same family. And uh, what I did is I, at the time we only had Maytag blue cheese, which is out of Iowa, the same people that would make washers. So I, ha I was in Iowa and I'll go to factory tours wherever I'm at if I can. And I bought a whole wheel of blue cheese and I had a party and it was a blue cheese party and I created all these recipes. One was stuffed uh, pork chops, things like that. This was not part of those. This recipe came to me uh, for my cheesecake book. Somebody I knew had made it and they said it was really good. So I created a, a blue cheese pistachio cheesecake. Pistachios are one of my favorite nuts. It, uh, it makes great ice cream. And uh, maybe we'll do ice cream if this staying in, in homes past uh, 4th of July. So what we're gonna do is use our food processor. I'm gonna first just chop up the pistachios. You don't have to break open each pistachio, even though the other night I had Neil breaking open every single little pistachio because I was making that pistachio cake. But here, I went to Trader Joe's today, bought the package, and pulsing chops it up very quickly, and now they're chopped. Probably about 10 times, maybe a little, I just did about three. So, and you can turn it on and off. And the aroma, that's about it. You just want them chopped up a little bit, and we don't have to wash our food processor to make this. All of the, uh, Blue cheese dust, or I mean pistachio dust, will go into our cheesecake, it doesn't matter. So there's that. Our ingredients, everything's gonna be on my blog, and then the recipes with pictures and stuff like that, like I did last night. So we've got unsalted butter. I gotta tell you a story. I was invited to a party, and I love being invited to parties, but some people say, oh, we worry about inviting you to a party because you might uh, bring better food or, or we can't compare. I eat Hostess donuts and that's why I became a pastry chef because I went to the Hostess factory when I was six years old and they gave us a whole bag of donuts. I was in love. I thought I'm going to be a pastry chef. So I was six years old. So what it is, it's I go to this party and this guy comes up to me and he says, oh my God, I was hoping you weren't going to be here. I was like, well, thanks a lot. Welcome to you too to the party. I said, well, why? Well, I brought your pistachio cake and I didn't use all the butter. I said, well, did you not have enough butter? He said, no, I decided to make it low fat. 
Well, this recipe, you can't really make low fat. You just eat half as much, then it's low fat in my eyes. So the cheesecake itself didn't work. And then he's telling everybody at the party, it's my recipe. When you change the recipe, it's not mine anymore, it's yours. So if you take out or use butter flavor Crisco, which I will not be at the party, but uh, don't change the recipe. Now, he, uh, he might be watching this, uh, but he's an anesthesiologist. So what I told him, I said, how would you like me to come into your work and only give somebody half the gas before uh, you, know, you give an operation? He goes, well, that wouldn't be right. And I said, that's what you did with my food. You only did half the butter. So half the gas, half the butter. So think of it that way. So then we've got cream cheese, Port Reyes blue. They've got two. They've got the original blue, which I'm gonna be using. And then later on in the week, I'm gonna be eating my uh, bay blue. So, oh, bay blue. Neil said yeah, you couldn't see that. So it looks mm -hmm. almost the same. The original and the bay blue. And you, you can go to Port Reyes, uh, cheese and check out all of their different cheeses. So here is our cheese. I am a stickler on blue cheese. If you're going to make this recipe, let's say you don't want to buy the higher end, fine. But don't buy it already crumbled in a little plastic tub. You do not know when that was crumbled. And the crumble, you can't tell if it's good or bad um, little hairs around it. So there I crumbled the blue cheese. So I'm going to show you right here. Neil, can you get a close up of me doing this? We're going to Absolutely. Absolutely. Neil does a great job at this cuz he he already ate some I was testing recipes for a company I'm not allowed to tell you guys about. Uh, when I work on recipes for companies, we don't disclose who we're doing them for until they're done. And uh, I was working on two today and he already had some. So we're gonna take two forks, our block out of the refrigerator. All we're gonna do, I'm gonna do this backwards at first, is just do this, just to get crumbles. You just wanna do this. And this blue cheese is so good, even the edges are not real hard. Some have like a thick rind to it, this doesn't. And uh, you don't wanna crumble this, I mean, just, Big chunks and two forks work the best. And it just, I love blue cheese. Sometimes I use it too much. That's one thing Neil will say. Uh, can you make that with a little less blue cheese? So there's your crumbles. I'm using a whole pound of blue cheese. And like I said, I'm using the original. And every little piece, that little piece can be a nice, we're gonna save those forks to put the little crumbles on the cracker. So then we have uh, a shallot minced. The other night I used a shallot and I had people say they never saw them before. Some people right now that are doing uh, cooking, they've never seen things at their grocery store or they've never used them. Here's the shallot full. And I feel Julia Child, it's close, oh, up. close up of our shallot. I feel Julia Child brought the shallot to America. Because if you read the book, if you love Julia, read the book, The Letters Between Julia and Avis. They were letters back and forth, and Julia sent Avis one of these great little things that were like an onion from France, and how great they were to cook with. And it came in the mail, which you couldn't do today, and that's kind of what started it. So here's, I feel, that was in the 50s, 60s. So there's our shallot, and we minced that up. And then we have some, now because I did this ahead of time, and this is what chefs do, is they put wet toweling on top of your chopped spices, or I mean herbs. So there's our parsley, and then we've got some green onions, even the stems, all the way up to only the crunchy part. And then we've got uh, white, oh, Marsala wine. Now normally whenever I'm using wine in cooking or a fortified wine, I'll say use the high end if you can. Uh, I think I owe somebody the answer to what kind of um, wine I used in the pistachio cake. Well, this Marsala wine, I don't drink Marsala, so I'm just gonna get the lower end uh, Paul Masson, but it's a couple dollars, and that I'll use for this. So it's only a quarter cup of that. And then we've got white pepper. White pepper, it's one of those things that people don't like. Um, or they love it. They think it smells like dishwasher, or dish, detergent. 
but if it's okay, I use the white because the black will look like black specks throughout the, the dish. So I'll keep them with the white. We've got the green onion, and then we have our pistachios that are chopped. So these are our ingredients. First, we have a cheesecake pan. This is not a spring form. I'll go into detail on cheesecake pans probably when I do a cheesecake this next week. Somebody asked me if I would do the Disney chocolate chip cheesecake I used to do over there. So it's um, a pan where the bottom pops up. It's not a spring form. Here's our parchment. We need to do a parchment circle. You can buy the circles already done, but I'm going to just take it and make one real quick. I've got some in my cupboard, but I'm going to take my parchment, crease it, fold it again. This might be, all I'm going to do is fold it into a point. This point here that's all folded will be in the center. So I will do it again. And again, so remember paper airplanes? That's what I'm doing. So here's, I'll go about center. This isn't always perfect, but it's pretty close. So right there, make a crease, and that will be my cut. And by doing that, I should have a circle. Ta -da! And that goes on the bottom. And this, just in case you go to a gas station, take this with you. <laughs> uh, Neil never knows. You didn't what have I'm an earthquake. Say. I was just no, laughing. No earthquake, and, and Neil never knows what I'm going to say. And my mom, my mom's so sweet. One time she had her uh, her minister over, and she said for for dinner, and she says, "Please just don't say anything at dinner." This was when I was like in high school. And uh, she says, because I never know what's going to come out of your mouth. So anyway, we've lined that. Now in the, and I kept quiet. And then halfway through the dinner, he says, you haven't said much. And I said, I was told not to say a word. And so I got kicked under the table. So with the, with the metal blade, we're going to blend the butter. Now the butter should be room temperature. Now remember when I told you, whenever you're using the food processor, and this is room temperature, you want to disperse the stuff around the bowl. You do not want it to be all in one spot okay so I don't just take one big chunk and throw it on top then we're going to take our cream cheese and about half of the blue cheese uh, yeah only about half we don't use the whole blue cheese at first we want to keep some in chunks so take about that now the good part with this blue cheese also is it does it has vein it's veiny but it's not dark dark blue to where it will change the color of our dish to a gray sometimes some of the lower end cheeses do that so we're going to just take that like that and let's see and um the shallots go in And I'm glancing, normally I have this all memorized, but I just want to make sure. Sometimes I'll do this recipe without taught looking, because I've done it so much, but then I always forget something. So we've got the parsley and the pepper will go in. So what I have left is the green onions, pistachios, half of the blue cheese just to recap this and we've got the marsala wine now let's see the Mar not marsala the madeira marsala is the other one right making sure yeah madeira now we're going to turn this said marsala earlier yeah it's all is madeira i'm sorry marsala is what we used in the um uh, we used uh that chicken dish but i haven't made that one yet so we're gonna pulse this until smooth. Just pulse it. And we're gonna look at it and make sure. I can see the cream cheese getting stuck. So I'm gonna get a spatula and a wooden spoon to move it around. Sometimes it takes a little longer in the food processor because you do have a lot of things in here. And we'll just blend that up, and it's gonna become creamy. And 
this will be our mixture that we are going to put in here in layers. So on the bottom of the pan, we're going to place half of the leftover blue cheese. So we're going to take about half of this and just sprinkle it all around. Move it around a little bit because technically the bottom is going to be the top because I will throw it back over and then off. Let's see how this looks. Just have one big chunk of cream cheese and the coloring of this is a light green right now, which is nice. If you use some of the lesser blue cheeses, you'll get a gray color. If you get that, you're just going to add more uh, you'll fold more greens into it so the eye will be tricked. Nobody will see it's green. They'll see the bright of that. So anyway, now we're going to take half of our green, sprinkle that, and sprinkle some of the pistachios, just about a fourth of it. That's what it looks like right now. Then we're going to take our mixture, clean the sides, I'm going to take half of this mixture and place it on top, about half, and I'm going to just do like this, and let me get an offset spatula, Neil's going to do a close up of that for you, just like that. That's an offset, yep. Good. Smooth this out. And it's okay if some of the cheese comes to the top, you push it down, just like that. Now, you're gonna see holes. Don't worry about it. Just smooth it as smooth as you can get because now this, I told you that first night when we did the pistachio cake, you never pound a cake. This one's not going into the oven, so we'll be fine. We're gonna do this. You can see the holes come up to flatten it. Then we'll smooth that out. So now our, our mixture got stuck in there. Then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to take the rest of our blue cheese and sprinkle it on top of that. And just like that. Now, this dish is like beyond belief great to eat with stone ground crackers, more greens. I save a little bit for decorating. And same thing with the pistachios. Save a few pistachios for decorating. Then the last of our mixture we will put on top. We can also do that. Now, notice I don't put a blob right in the center. I try to do a couple blobs like that. Same thing when I'm putting brownie batter, anything that's thick into a pan, do it in some sections like that. So then you can smooth it out a little bit easier. Then you're gonna do the same thing that I just did. Try not to get anything to come up, but just like that. Smooth it. Now, right now, this is the bottom, because when I invert it, I will do that. You can see it, the air is going down, making room for all the... It's the same thing when somebody says they're full, they've had a big dinner, but you have ice cream. Ice cream can pats, so you're okay. Clean the edge. And there is your blue cheese cheesecake. Now, 
I didn't make one ahead because I didn't want two of these around the house. Plus it would take two pounds of cheese. So what I'm gonna do is after it firms for an hour, I will put a plate on top, turn it upside down and unmold it and put some of the uh, pistachios around the edges and a little bit of green on top. Remember, we put this on the top already, so when we unmold it, you'll see it on top already. So I didn't want to uh, unmold it right now. We'll wait for an hour, then I'll come back with a picture and you'll see what it is. I'd like to thank you for joining us today. Uh, Port Reyes, I'll have that on my website. Be careful uh, out there, the weekend's coming up. I'll probably do a show tomorrow and skip the weekend and come back on Monday. Uh, Thanks so much for tuning in. Be safe. Love your neighbors. If you have some older neighbors next door, knock on their door. See if they're doing okay. Uh, you've been reading that some haven't been coming out and stuff like that. So got to check up on people. So love you all. Take care and leave some comments. Bye.